Welcome to Seven Trumpets Prepper and to this very important and very special video that I'm doing covering who the true biblical Hebrews are. I first off want to say, as if the warning at the beginning of the video wasn't enough, I want to make sure and reiterate this that I'm not a racist person, uh, nor am I a person that hates certain individuals. I love all of humanity. I want to see all of humanity making a new kingdom. But nevertheless, there is true Hebrews, there is a true people of the Most High that is scattered throughout the nations of the earth this day. It is not whom that many people believe they are, such as the so-called Jews in the nation-state of Israel that we so see before us right now. I would interject that the true biblical Hebrews are the so-called African-American people that are scattered abroad throughout the world. Now, I will show you through a mass amount of evidence that I'll put up on the screen right here verses below and you can do your due diligence and research these things out to see if they be so. It is very important that you understand who the true Hebrews are because that end time prophecy, lots of it, surround these individuals. I am a Gentile. I know exactly who I am, but it seems to be the one group of people in the world that have been by the rest of the world tried to be dumbed down to the fact or completely erase their history uh, from history is the African-American people, so-called, that are scattered throughout the nations. Now, please understand that not every single black person is a true Hebrew, but it is those that are under the curse of Deuteronomy 28. And you'll be able to tell by the time that I'm done giving you this information in this video who the true Hebrews are, and you may be one of them. So let's begin. In the early pictures that you would see depicted in um, worship places, churches, and things of this nature, as you can see right here in this image right here and others that I'll continue to put up that Messiah was depicted as a black person you know an African-American person and this is totally different to what we see as Roman Catholicism was further introduced and spread abroad throughout the world um, we always see a white Caucasian Messiah being depicted and I want to reiterate throughout this that I'm not being racist I love every single person in humanity. It's very important we know who the true Hebrews are. And anyway, as time progressed, though, these paintings and the depictions went from the black African-American um, features to a more Caucasian white feature. And this wasn't done overnight. This was a slow sifting process as to what we have today. Now, in every church house and on their walls, we see a white messiah. And this is, could, could not be further from the truth. Now, I'll put links in the bottom of the video description where you can go see a lot of these um, abroad on the internet. And I encourage you to research Google because there's so many um, remaining artifacts of this from centuries before. Uh, as we move forward, there is, after Noah come off the ark, and the sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, the sons of Ham, is a guidepost that we can use to help us find the true Hebrews because the sons of Ham, the true Hebrew Israelites, always blended with the sons of Ham. And I'll give you many examples of this. As we read in Genesis 10, it gives the genealogy. And so we can see um, the beginning of the division of people. But the Egyptians come from their father Ham. In Palestine, if you look at some of the people that are descendants from long ago, they're black. Although we have other people of ethnic background moved into Palestine today, the people that intermingled with the true Hebrews, the Palestinians, uh, many of them are black. And they, that is from generations back. Uh, not only this, but the scripture states that in Amos 9 and 7 that the Hebrews are like the Ethiopians to him. 
uh, if we look in Ethiopia, I find that most people have no problem understanding that the people there are of black African nature. Now, the uh, sons of Ham, though, as we find in the scripture, we can see that Joseph blended with the sons of Ham because whenever his other brothers came to uh, receive goods and merchandise to take back to help their family, they did not know that it was Ham. Now, this could not have went down if he was of another ethnic background, whatever color that may be, to blend with the black African-American Egyptian at that time. I'm sorry, they're not American at all, but the black African Egyptian. Okay, so Moses, and, and make sure to read the scripture as well. Moses blended with the sons of Ham, the Egyptians, because that they passed as their own people. We can find this recorded in scripture. In Acts chapter 21, we find Shaul, um, Paul, passed as a, uh Egyptian. And was asked this because he spoke Greek. At the you know, if a man spoke Greek and he was Caucasian color as me, the Roman soldier may have just thought, "Hey, he's a Greek." But he had to ask him because the ethnic color. Yahushua fled into Egypt. Well, his mother and father took him into the land of Egypt. Uh, whenever Herod saw his life, this therefore uh, these people were able to blend and you know look the same. This is so important to understand because uh, not only is it found in Scripture, but even secular examples such as this right here, National Geographic, showed the black pharaohs of Egypt. See, before the Arab people came in and took over what is modern-day Egypt now as an ethnicity, um, the people that was there beforehand were of African black characteristic. This is so important to understand because when history is erased by the following generations, that is what is history. Unless you do your due diligence and go back and search now, these things out. Moving things forward, so. in modern Egypt, we find that the Egyptian premier Nasir spoke to the Israeli people at that time whenever they were returning to their said nation, and it was supposed to be the true Israelites. He said, you left black you came back white. We cannot accept you. And you can see a quote put up here, right here. I'll put the quote up. Now, that's not me. And once again, I'm not trying to be racist, uh, anti-Semitic, or whatever you would want to label it. This is other people's statements. This is historical fact evidence. Hitler. I cannot think of a more murderous, sadistic, evil human being than Hitler. Nevertheless, Hitler provides us some very interesting uh, evidence that he knew as well who the true Hebrews was. In a film documentary that he showed to his generals that is documented in Time Life magazine, as you can check out for yourself, and also there's video links in the video description below, to uh, other evidences of this where you can see the hard copy of the book being spoke of in the video. Now that doesn't mean that I endorse everything in those videos and other people's thoughts. I'm just showing you that this book does exist nevertheless. In Time Life magazine, the uh, it was labeled, I believe the book was labeled the Nazis uh, from every time that I've ever seen it. I've only seen the book a couple times in my life so far um, and I want to get a copy of it because uh, it's so powerful. Nevertheless, Hitler shows to his generals who the true Hebrews are and who the posers are. And he describes to his generals that the white face kind of, you know, I, people always say that I kind of look Jewish. Um, that, that's actually a fair statement because my background is Germanic, Russian. I have, you know, that is my ancestry. Well, we'll find out later in this video as I described to you that the Ashkenazi Jews uh, are from that region in the world. I am not a Jew. I am not an Israelite. I am a Gentile that has accepted Messiah into my heart, Yahushua, to keep his commands, do his Torah and his Father's commands, and trust in him so that I may have eternal salvation. Now, Hitler explained the white person that was posing to be an Israelite as the bastard. And please forgive me, I mean not to be profane, I am describing exactly what was shown in the film. It also showed a African man of nature and facial feature hair texture as the true Hebrew. And it broke this down and digressed very deep. It went extremely deep. It was profound to me how much emphasis he put on explaining to his generals 
who the true Hebrew were. It was shocking. And I encourage you to look into that. If Hitler, a psychopathic murderer, that I, I totally um, acknowledge that uh, genocide was taking place and that Hitler tried to kill many people, um, especially Auschwitz, is a terrible atrocity upon humanity. But nevertheless, these people are not the true biblical Hebrews. They suffered great murderous atrocities against their people, but they're not the true biblical Hebrews. Please understand this. Moving forward from this, though, the Ashkenazi, it's very important that you understand who Ashkenazis are. They're not the real Hebrew. Matter of fact, a lot of them look like me, which I just told you. I'm not a Hebrew or a Jewish person or Israelite. I am a Gentile. I cannot reiterate that enough. In the 11th century, these people began to really take on the characteristics, try to um, personify themselves as if they were the true Hebrew, which it cannot be further from the truth. They speak something that's more along the lines of Yiddish. Uh, whenever I first began working in ministry, I wanted to learn to make sure I knew how to read, write, and understand and speak Hebrew so that I'd done exactly what the Master commanded, well, Hebrew and Gentile, in his commands. As a person that speaks English, I found that it was very imperative very quickly that I get back to the foundation and find out exactly what the Scripture said. As I went to a foreign language academy, one of the first things that got brought up to me was that I spoke kind of sounded Yiddish. I, I inquired as to what Yiddish was. I found out that it's kind of a Germanic language tone mixed with Hebrew. With my Germanic background and my own family's lineage, it made perfect sense to me, and I understood all of a sudden exactly what they were trying to say. In going to Hebrew school, this brought up an important point to me at that point, though, is why would that be the case? Because the Hebrew people should always have been the Hebrew people. Their tongue should not be something intermingled with other people. As we move forward in Genesis 10, verse 3, we find Ashakanaz. And that's actually, the people are actually explained in the scripture where they're from, who they are. So they're not Hebrews. And the scripture itself attests to this. So these people are posers. At this point, whether a person wants to accept and acknowledge that or not, the written word is the written word. Neither you nor I can do anything to change that. Well, unless you're like the beast power in Rome and want to change times and laws. I guess you could probably attempt to change scripture as well, but I'm not Babylon. I'm a servant of the true Most High, and I want to do exactly what his word says. The true Hebrews will be regathered when Messiah returns. These people will be gathered out of all the nations abroad that they've been scattered amongst. The nation state of Israel right now, many people uh, refer to it as the terrorist nation state of Israel. I refer to it as the poser state of Israel because the people that are there uh, most of them do not even acknowledge Messiah, nor do they even keep the Jewish faith. There are actually nothing more than people in a land that's not their own. That's just factual statement. Now, what I want to do now is I want to go to Deuteronomy 28. Because Deuteronomy 28, out of all the peoples and nations of the world, tongues, ethnics, and backgrounds, they define out one population of people that are more unique than any population of people up on the planet of Earth. They're the only people that meet these characteristics and therefore can be the only people that are the true Hebrews. So let us begin. And I will prove to you that it is the people that is defined as the African American that have been scattered abroad throughout the nation of the world because of the sins and transgression of breaking Master Yahweh's commands and their ancestors doing it. Leprosy is something that most people don't understand. If I got leprosy, you would never really know it. Why? Because it makes you white. Black people, it's very profound because you're black, and then you become white. Uh, this is something that you can't hide, okay? Um, nevertheless, that's why the leprosy in the day and time of the ancient biblical Hebrews, it was so profound because it does nothing for me. For you, it's life-changing and devastating, nevertheless. As... We move forward throughout the, the scripture in Deuteronomy 28, and I encourage you to read the entire chapter in full context and look at exactly what I'm saying. Slavery is no nothing new to the African American people. You will find that if you're an African American, many of your ancestors were exactly that, slaves. It says in the scripture that there would be an iron, a yoke of iron put about your neck and that you would be turned into a slave. Well, that happened in bondage in the land of Egypt. 
And not only that, but here we'll find in shortly thereafter that the scripture says that you're going to be taken from Egypt in slave ships. And that's exactly what happened and scattered all amongst the world. But we'll get to that in just a moment. The scripture says that you would take a wife and another would lie with it. How many women were raped during slavery and taken from their husbands and sold to someone else as a master and taken abroad? All right. They shall built a house, but you won't dwell in it. How many built the nation of the United States of America today, but you have, you're, you have no part with it, you know? Uh, you would plant vineyards, but you wouldn't eat the fruit thereof, harvest it. There you go, you know, you worked and toiled in the fields, your ancestors worked and toiled in the fields, but you had no part of it. The sons and daughters taken away, you know, the, you'd long for them all the day long, your eyes would fail for longing after them, and, and they're not to return. The slavery, the children would be born, they'd be uh, to a certain age, and they'd be sold, okay? Uh, the, you'd be oppressed and crushed, a nation of people that's oppressed and crushed. Uh, not only that, but uh, it just uh, madness and blindness. You know, the, uh, I mean not to be racist when I say this, but I found some of the craziest stuff you find uh, in the African American population. Just pull up your pants, quit looking ridiculous. There's so many things that is just, um, that it's because of the sin of your ancestors that you do these things and what you do now. And I mean not to be racist, it's just the truth. Um, your carcass would be for the beasts of the field. You know, so many people uh, that were slaves just murdered and cast out, and the animals, the beasts of the field, and the fowls of the air ate your flesh. You shall fear day and night. You know, uh, the scripture said that. Removed in all the kingdoms of the earth, if you look from the continent of Africa, where the, the, the Arabians called the, uh, the best of my knowledge that I could find from this, and I'll try to get... This is the only thing that I'm still trying to get a solid factual statement from the Arabic people. But it said that the Yehudim were a people accursed of their Elohim. And when they were sold off um, as slaves, that's what they were said, that was what would be said. And that whenever slavery was taking place, that the uh, African American people so far referred to, but you are the true Yehudim or Israelites were spread abroad to the United Kingdom, to America, to Australia, all abroad. Your, your people are spread all abroad. Um, and will be regathered together again back into your land of Israel. You're spoiled and no man saves you. You know, I, I find out of all the peoples that are oppressed, especially in America, I find this interesting. That And once again, please, please do not define this as racism. But um, especially at the point in time we're at right now, illegals immigrating into the United States, um, foreigners abroad, even, even for me as a uh, white man, I found that when I became unemployed, it was very difficult on certain things. But I find for the, the most difficult people that have a hard time is probably the African American people. And I've wondered for many years why that was until I understood that you people were the true Hebrews under the curse of Deuteronomy 28. That makes perfect sense. Um, the, the scripture says that the stranger would be put above you and you would be put below. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've went into a McDonald's and other places abroad that it's the lowest of low jobs and that's where you find many of the true Hebrews. And once again, I mean not to be racist. You're, this is why you're under this ban is because of Deuteronomy, the curse of Deuteronomy 28. And, you know, Deuteronomy 30, if you read that chapter, it's a call for a turn. And I encourage you, to begin the restoration of the Creator's appointed times, right? There's a link to it. Keep His commandments. Believe on the Most High and accept His Son because you, if you do so, one day you will have back what your ancestors lost. One day you'll have all these things restored unto you again. And, you know, it's just like Isaiah 56 and Isaiah chapter 58. I hold so tightly to those chapters myself in the Scripture because I'm a Gentile. I long for the new kingdom. I want to be gathered to be a part of it. But you are a very specific people. And for those of you who are listening, such as myself, uh, like myself that are Gentiles, it's very important that we understand who the true Hebrews are. Because those that are posers in the land of Israel right now, until the times of the Gentile be fulfilled, these people will not inherit the, uh, the land of Israel. They're only here for a time being, for a short space. These people that are posers in the land will hold this, the land of Israel. They are not the true Hebrew. And they never will be. They're, the life is in the blood. 
I know who I am because I done a DNA check and it it fulfilled everything that my ancestors, that you know, my grandmother. Uh, I, it, people don't refer and listen to the Ancient of Days anymore. They don't listen to their elders. I listened to the Ancient of Days and my elders and I resourced them as often as I could before they all passed away. And they told me who my people were, who my people were, where my blood come from. And when I done that DNA check and they tested it, it traced it just down the line, right down the line to my people, who the, my ancestors and my those that were Ancient of Days that were still alive with me told me exactly who they'd be. It went right line up on line. But the only people in the world who know not who they are, except that they're African American, are the true biblical Hebrews. And I encourage you today that if you're under the sound of my voice to begin that journey. If you know, if these, right here, this statistics, this information that I've shared with you from scripture and from history, if you are compelled that you're one of those people, I encourage you to begin searching the scripture now because the time of restoration is coming. Uh, the last thoughts I would share with you as an individual is that I have many friends of every faith, ethnic, background, just about you could think of. I've told each and every one of the people that are my friends that are of African American nature um, and people that I come in contact with that are strangers to me. Um, they're not strangers when we leave, though. I always make a point to you know, befriend everyone I can, but I have found that as I tell these people whom they are, that many of them acknowledge that that's exactly who they are. That brings me great joy because time is drawing to the end and the time for understanding biblical prophecy, understanding who the true biblical Hebrews are, understanding the commandments, the time frame for accepting Messiah, all these things are drawing very short to the end. And as a person that has prepared themselves for the sounding of the seven trumpets of Revelation, this is the most critical time in the history of humanity. There will never be a time of turmoil like there is taking place now ever be again. It's so important we have every single characteristic of end time prophecy in place, and one of those is knowing who the true biblical Hebrews are. I hope this has been enlightening to you. I hope it's opened your eyes to so many things that have been hidden. Um, I promised I would do this video, and I hope for those who have requested it that it's a blessing to you. So until we see you again here at Seven Trumpets Prepper Channel, I hope you have a most blessed day in Yahushua name.